A couple of months ago, the last major upgrades appeared on the storefronts, the Ryzen 7000 series with a large cache, about the nuances of which I have already told you. The next processors would be the 14th generation of Intel with chiplets, which is likely to be released in 2024, and at about the same time AMD should also show us the competing Ryzen 8000s. But in the meantime, we are only in the mid-2023 and the pressing question is, what CPU to use for a new build? Which red and blue platforms are still relevant? Where to cut corners? Which processors to forget about? This is MK. Today we're talking about the relevant PC builds. To begin with, let's draw a red line. In our video about the core count stagnation era, we explained why 8 core processors are enough for everyone and for a long time. Therefore, the minimum for Intel is the LGA 1151v2, as well as 6 and 8 core i7s and i9s on the older, but still good, Skylake architecture. In addition, it is a baseline platform that officially supports TPM 2.0 and rebar to accelerate video cards. The problem with the LGA 1151v2 is that you are unlikely to be able to find a good new motherboard. There are only very simple boards on the H310 chipset left in the stores, so you'll need to look for a used board if this is the platform you're aiming for. I'm still using a Z390 and a 9700K myself. Of course I could still boost it by replacing it with a Marble Mutant from AliExpress, perhaps we'll talk about such a replacement for Xeons in the future, but today we will talk about current sockets which you can build your PC on without any unnecessary troubleshooting. And let's start with the LGA 1200. There are still a lot of new boards for this socket and it's still got a lot to offer. Intel didn't have a new architecture ready at that time, so the company had to squeeze the Skylake dry by increasing frequencies and adding extra cores and threads. As a result, even the lower end Core i3 had 4 cores and 8 threads, which is the level of the top end i7-7700K at that time, 2 years ago. And the Core i5 with 6 cores and 12 threads directly competed with the flagships of the previous socket, the i7-8700K. But considering these boards for purchase, if you don't want to go Team Red, is overall a good idea, however, with some caveats. The problem here is pricing. For a baseline 6-core i5 10400F, you will have to pay about $100, and about the same amount for a motherboard on a B560 chipset with a good VRM, 4 slots, and the ability to overclock memory. And that's where AMD comes in with its still relevant AM4 and a bunch of cheap Ryzens, which, unlike Intel Core, lose price very quickly. Such a 6-core Ryzen 5 5500 is now even cheaper than the i5 10400F. For example, I bought it for $75. True, the boards are somewhat more expensive. For high-quality boards on the B550 with 4 slots and a good VRM, you will have to pay an average of $100. That is, both the blue and the red setups would end up having the same cost. Therefore, let's compare the performance and upgradability. And alas, Intel loses in both cases. In games, the Ryzen 5 5500 turns out to be faster just by a bit, but still faster, on average by 5-7%. Despite the fact that the AMD CPU has a smaller cache, the newer architecture covers for it. And in productivity tasks, it is also slightly faster than the Skylake Core i5. These differences I pointed out are actually so slight that you could safely ignore them, if not for the main problem of the LGA 1200 socket. The lack of upgradability. A reasonable maximum here is the 8-core Core i7-11700F, since the slightly faster i9 of the 11th gen with its 14 nanometer process node and a clock speed under 5 GHz consumes under 300 watts, which will require both an expensive board with a high-quality VRM and a liquid cooling system. Therefore, stop at the i7-11700F, which is the best you can get with a rather average motherboard. And in general, this processor is very good. In terms of performance, it is quite capable of competing with the 8-core Ryzen 7 5800X, although it's still on average $20 more expensive than the opponent. But do not forget that the AM4 socket has an ace up its sleeve. It is the 5800X 3D with a huge L3 cache. And here, the LGA 1200 simply has no chance, because this processor is close to one of the top-end CPUs of the next Intel socket, the 12900K. Therefore, I cannot recommend building a PC on the LGA 1200 in 2023. 
although it has the support for all modern technologies, and the i5-10400F handles the RTX 3060 without problems, and the i7-11700F is sufficient enough for the RTX 1490. Still, this socket is in the same league as the LGA 1151 V2. This is a good option for buying on the used market if you happen to come across a favorable offer. As for the AM4, as you have already understood, it is a very good solution. I've already pointed out two good processors on it. This is the 6-core Ryzen 5 5500, sufficient for a build with an RTX 3060, and an 8-core Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, in case you got an RTX 1490 on your hands. There is also a good intermediate option, the 8-core Ryzen 7 5700X with slightly lower clock speed and without a 3D cache, which on average turns out to be 10-20% to faster than the 5500 and is well suited for the RTX 3080, 4070 or RX 6800 GPUs. There is no point in considering the 12 and even more so 16-core Ryzen 9s for games. As I mentioned earlier, for most projects, 8 cores will be more than enough, so these solutions are purely for intensive productivity tasks. They are real number crushers that easily overtake Intel's high-end solutions. The AM4 has another big plus end-to-end -end support between all generations on any boards. For example, now an 8-core Ryzen 7 1700 can be found for just $45. Is it a good option though? Alas, the first generation of the Zen architecture has too low performance per hertz, lower than even Skylake. On average, this is the level of the 4th gen Intel Core, which is 10 years old as of today. Therefore, the performance difference with newer solutions on the Zen 3 is about one and a half times, which is not worth saving some $25. So you need to forget about these old and out-of-date solutions on AM4, especially taking into account the rapid price drops for the Ryzen 5000s. And yes, this also applies to the still fast Ryzen 3000 on the Zen 2. What's the point of getting 8 old cores if 6 new ones are faster, in games that is, for a comparable price? The old sockets sorted out. The victor is the AM4. For Intel, the LGA 1200 was transitional in order to somehow compete with AMD. So the LGA 1700 was entrusted with a heroic mission to regain faith and to fight off two generations of red sockets at once. And I must say, Intel for once turned out to be a good platform, mainly due to the fact that the company didn't rush into modern technologies and a lot of the boards and chipsets on the LGA 1700 support the PCIe 4.0 bus without having to overpay for the 5.0 and DDR4 memory, the prices for which keep going down. If you look at the lower budget segment of the LGA 1700, there is an interesting 6-core Core i5-12400F, which costs comparable to the 6-core Ryzen 5 5600X, about $140, and provides a similar performance in games. Yes, the i3-12100 is even lower, but let's leave the 4-core CPUs back in 2015 where they belong, taking into account that it is more expensive than the 6-core Ryzen 5500, considering it for your build is not a good idea. At the same time, a 12400F board on Intel B660 with adequate VRM and 4 RAM slots costs about the same $100 as good solutions on AMD B550. That is, the builds come out comparable in cost, only this time the reds have upgradability issues. For the same $300, you can get either the best AM4 gaming processor, this is of course the 8-core Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, or a 14-core Core i5-13600KF. Yes, it has only 6 P cores, but the extremely high clock speed and a recent Raptor Lake architecture do their job and this processor outperforms the 5800X 3D in games by an average of 10%. So in the mid-tier segment, the LGA 1700 is clearly the winner. But as I said, the blue platform had to fight not only AM4, but also AM5. And AMD rolled out a mountain of upgrades here. The transition to LGA sockets, the support for DDR5, the new Zen 4 architecture for Ryzen 7000s with double-digit increase in performance. And the cherry on the cake is the Ryzen 7000 X 3D processors with an additional 64 megabytes of fast L3 cache, which we talked about separately. So who's gonna win in the top end segment? After all, even the 6-core Ryzen 7 7600X competes quite equally with the i5-13600K, but the latter is one and a half times more expensive. Good DDR5 boards from both camps are expensive, nearing to $200. So it turns out that just six months after the launch, the AM5 turns out to be more interesting than the LGA 1700, which has been on the market for almost two years. 
there were rumors that Intel finally came to its senses and the LGA 1700 will support at least three generations of processors. That's not the case. The 14th gen core CPUs with chiplets will require a new LGA 1851 socket, so the best you can get for the LGA 1700 is the 13900K. There is also a KS version, and perhaps the company will also roll out refreshes with a slightly increased clock speed, but they will not change the whole picture. All Raptor Lake solutions differ marginally, by no more than 10 to 15 percent, and buying the 13600K now in order to move to the 13900K later is not economically justified. But the AM5 locomotive is just gaining momentum, and AMD promises to support its socket right up to 2026. And even if you don't think about such a distant future, Intel simply has nothing to compete with the new Ryzen's with an increased L3 cache. The 8-core 7800X3D doesn't leave the slightest chance in games even for the 24-core 13900K, and the latter is more than $100 more expensive. Yes, we all know that the 7000X3Ds do not really like voltage above 1.3 volts, for which beta testers with the old BIOS, who bought them on AliExpress, are eternally grateful. But obviously, sooner or later AMD will solve these issues, and in a year the 8000 Ryzen series will be released, which is again rumored to have a huge increase in performance. So in the top end segment with an eye on the future, the AM5 looks much more interesting than the LGA 1700. What else is there to say? Having broken into the desktop processor market again in 2017, AMD is not going to give Intel the slightest chance for a break. Firing a new generation of processors like a machine gun every year, this makes previous solutions become cheaper very quickly. As a result, the roles have already changed in the gaming segment. If earlier the reds with their phenoms and FXs at best competed with the blues in the middle price segment, now Intel solutions are unconditionally winning only in the low and mid-tier segments. The still actively sold LGA 1200 is not at all relevant for building a new PC. It can keep competition with the AM4 at best on the used market. The LGA 1700 on the other hand is much more interesting than the AM4 at the mid price level. After all, Intel was able to give birth to a good Alder Lake and Raptor Lake architectures without explicitly focusing on DDR5. But in the top end, the Blues again have no chance. The LGA 1700 platform is actually already dead, but the AM5's path has just begun, and clearly on a positive note. This is the situation as of today, June 19, 2023. It is my birthday, by the way, I'm turning 34. My name is Mikhail Kroshen. I wish you to have a good summer, warm weather, and to stay healthy. This was MK. I'll see you later. Bye.